All right. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Come on in the house. Yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in. Welcome to Love Coach Sessions in here today. Men are talking. We got a great session going on today. You guys be talking about what men find beautiful in, in a woman. And I got my guys in the background. <laughs> We're going to have a great show here today, y'all. So come on in. Come on in the building. Hey, look, listen, as you guys are coming in, let me know where y'all watching the show from. Drop it in the comment section. If you're watching on YouTube, you could drop it in the comment section in the uh, – we got the section there just waiting for you to come on in and let us know where you're watching the show from. And uh, we're going to get it popping in just a moment. All right. Come on in the house. Let's have the conversation. So, you guys, I am KTJ, and today we're talking about it. I'm a dating relationship coach, and I talk about high-value women, high-value men. Uh, background is in working with men. And so today I brought some guys to have the conversation on what men find beautiful in a woman. Ten secret thoughts that men have. And so we're going to give you way more than ten thoughts. <laughs> All right? We're going to give you way more than ten thoughts because there's so much to talk about. Um, and, and, and when I get with the fellas, I'm going to bring the fellas in in a minute. We're going to talk about it uh, from, a, from a surface level, and then we'll go deep. <laughs> we ain't going, we're not going to sugarcoat it. We're not going to just leave it all, all you know, pretty and, and, and tasty on top. But we're going to talk about what we like on the outside and the inside. So uh, it's all good. Hey, LV, thank you so much for popping in. She said, what's good? Yes, ma'am. North Carolina is in the building. All right. Very nice. Very nice. All right. So let me go ahead and bring our fellas in to get the conversation going. All right. Let me let me see if I can set it up just, just the way I want it. I want to just be able to see everybody. Gentlemen. Come on in the building and uh, introduce yourselves. You can kind of tell tell our folks who you are, maybe where you're from, and uh, you know what what uh, what your significance is. What are you What are you into? All right, Freddie, you up? Hey, hey thank you for having me, Kelvin. I, my name is Freddie Levin. I'm from Atlanta, uh, Georgia. Uh, born and raised. Uh, went to Morehouse College, uh, psychology degree major. Um, life coach, um, certified in life coaching. Um, I love dealing with uh, couples and relationships and just helping um, the African-American community, man, prosper in relationship, man. It's, it's therapeutic for me. Um, I just love people, man. I love just helping people grow in life with themselves and outside themselves, too, as well. So I want to thank you all for having me on the stage, and I'm enjoying being here amongst the brothers tonight. Nice. All right, we got my man, uh, Coach Richie, is in the building. <laughs> he, he's uh, he's famous on Instagram, just about. We 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 gonna put that word in the, in the air, <laughs> doing this thing out there. Talk to us, brother. Man, hey hey man, this is a, this is awesome. Hey, KT, Coach Love, man, thank you for having me on the stage with you and the rest of the fellas. Man, this is a powerful. This is gonna be a powerful setting. I'm already feeling it. I'm already like getting getting goosed up. But I'm I'm Coach Richie. And I'm originally from Oklahoma. I reside in Dallas, Texas right now, just loving the whole Texas weather and what's going on. And I am a coach, a life coach. I'm a relationship coach with my wife, and we work with couples. That's our passion. We love that. We really go deep, and we understand trauma. So we help you heal and bring that love and that intimacy out in you and your partner. And that's what we're all about is really going deep and not surface level things. And we want to be able to go deep and discover the cause and not only the effect. And that's how you attract your forever soul mate. Thank you. I'm, I'm excited for this. All right. Good brother. All right. Good stuff. Robert Lee. Hey, say Robert how you Lee. doing? How y'all doing? My name is Robert Lee. I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. I'm also a coach. Uh, my perspective is always I believe in healthy relationships and healthy marriages. I think that's something that I try to promote, you know, we we talk about relationships all the time, but we also need to talk about healthy marriages because I believe that's something that's lacking in our community. If we can get more healthy marriages in our community, our community will grow a little bit more. You can catch me on uh, Instagram, also on my name, Robert Lee. You can catch me on Facebook. All right. Nice. 
right. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. I'm just pulling some stuff up here. So, uh, mm -hmm. so you, you, gentlemen, uh, and I think we might have, did we lose Freddie? All right. I'm sure he'll be back in the building. So yeah. let's get the, let's get the conversation going of uh, fellas. Um, the title today is, is what you find, what men find beautiful uh, in a woman. Uh, and so we're talking about the 10 secrets thoughts. I, I said 10 secret thoughts, but we're going to get way more ladies. Uh, you're gonna get way more thoughts about what men think, like like suggestions and mm -hmm. things here about what men think when it comes to um, attraction, uh, inside, outside. We talking about it all. So, uh, brother Richie, you go first. Jump right in. Well, we are we gonna, you said we're gonna start with surface level. We start you, with surface. You, you, you know what? You can start with whatever you want to talk about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, for me. For me, it is the what is, what is the it's going to be attractive for I mean for me and a lot of men that I'm I'm talking to is healing is on that you're on that that adventure and that mission. I know this is like this sounds really crazy, but if you're healing, you're loving yourself and you liking yourself and your values. You have values and your values align with who you are. That's that's beauty. That's attractive, and that's what's going to help you and allow you to attract your forever soulmate. If you're on that adventure of loving yourself, liking yourself, healing, forgiving yourself, and just being who you are and understanding your values and they align with who you are. That's that's it. That's what it is right there. Nice. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Brother Lee. Yeah, I would go along with the coach. It, it's one, like I said, you got to love yourself. It, and one of the next things that I would say, you got to know who you are as an individual. And that's a law he said in that journey. You got to learn who you are so you can attract that individual and ignore the counterfeit. See, a lot of times how we get these different, well, you get into these different relationships, you really don't know who you are. It's like you, you test drive in different vehicles. You know, you don't really know what type of vehicle you want. So you you test driving all of these vehicles and each one of these vehicles are not dependable. They don't get you to where you need to be. Why? Because you haven't sat down and said, I want this is what I'm looking for. This is me. This is what I like. And let me try to find or sit back as a woman. You supposed to be found. But for me to see for the man to see me that that is made for me. I have to know who I am. And a lot of times with the ladies, you know, a lot of times, ladies, you you really don't know who you are. You're going back and forth. You into this philosophy. You into that philosophy. It's true. You supposed to learn different things and be able to to absorb different things. But you got to know who you are to be able to attract that individual. Like my coach said, for your ever soulmate. Nice, nice, nice. Brother Freddie. Talk to us. Uh, tell us, what do you find beautiful in a woman? Oh, man, I, I find beautiful in a woman, man, when she loves herself. Um, you know, you have to love yourself first in order to be productive in your relationship. And a lot of times, uh, as women, they don't, they don't love themselves enough to, you know, keep relationship going productively. And I think that's a big key, especially when you're dating somebody. Um, and, and I just love people that love themselves and then they can enhance themselves and their relationship better as, as well. So, you know, that's my biggest key on uh, relationships uh, for myself is All that right. finding, finding the like-minded people that love themselves. All right. Shout out to uh, Aurora. She's over here. She's in Georgia. And uh, Monica Williams. Hello, Monica. She said, greetings, my brothers. Be blessed. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. Steph is in the building. Lavanya is in the building. LV is in the building. So look, so um, that that was all nice, fellas. <laughs> but we we gonna get to some specifics, Freddie, because I I know your wife, okay. And when you when you met her, you wasn't like you know. <laughs> I think I bet she really likes herself. I like her because she likes herself. That's not what you said, Freddie. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what you said so talk to me about what you when, when you saw her or, or you decided like yo 
out of all because you see you would you you from you here you you're in Atlanta you you know beautiful women you know beautiful women and uh you you, you know whether you want to talk about your wife and specifically you could listen y'all could talk about your mama if you want to which what you find beautiful in a woman but just we we talk about attributes now like we talk about physical attributes what do you find beautiful in a woman Man, Kelvin, when I, I I'm gonna keep it 100 real quick. I, I had to make it nice and sweet for the for I, introduction real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Now we get into it. <laughs> but if you want to keep it, if you want to keep me 100 real quick, man. When I saw her, man, I, I first saw her, man. I thought she was the most uh, gorgeous thing I walking, man. She had the the body, the hips, the lips, man, and. And that made me want to just talk to her, man. And, and when I saw her in person, because we met her online, man, everything lined up perfectly, uh, man. And, and then when I, you know, we went out for our first date, man, the body was banging. Uh, and then, you know, once I got past the physical, man, I, I, I saw her mental and, and what she had to enhance in my life, man. And we talked for like nine or ten hours at the <laughs> at a restaurant. And from that point on, man, it's been like uh, love and romance ever since. Now, I'm not saying that we're perfect by no means. You know, we've mm -hmm. had our ups and downs. But through it all, man, the, the physical part, oh, man, hands down, uh, she's the best one I, I've had. <laughs> and I'm from, yeah. I'm from the A, so you already know. <laughs> that says a lot. That says a lot. Brother Richie. Temptation City. <laughs> that says a lot. Brother Richie, what's your thoughts? Uh, like we talking physical attributes? What, okay. Well, what um, turns yeah. you on about a woman? Okay. Well, I mean, look, I just, I just, just, just like uh, Freddie just said, I just talk about my wife and just going to put it out there, just like that. My wife stands six two. That means she's really stunning and she's really flawless. Mm -hmm. She's from Europe. She's a creation. And when I mm -hmm. seen her, we met at a personal development workshop. Okay. I seen her, and I was. At first, I seen it because I, I was only there for just the business. And then when she came to the table, when we were going over some different things. I was like, oh, I was looking at her. And I was like, I seen the attraction. I seen the beauty. I seen the, the, the tallness. She's tall. I seen the legs. I seen mm -hmm. all of it. And then we went to Miami on the beach. And we, we talked for about 10 hours the first day. And then after all that, 55 days later, we were married. Because what? of the attraction, yes, the attraction. And just like Freddie said, then the mental kicked in because we were on the phone, FaceTime. She was in Florida. I was in Oklahoma. We had a long distance for a while. Then, like I said, 55 days later, we were married just like that because, I mean, there's that whole attraction and the, the love mm -hmm. that I seen she had for herself. And then our values were aligned with each other. And just the beauty of her, just her whole essence and her being, her body and the way it was shaped, the way she was walking, the way she was moving, the way she was talking, all those things was, I mean, just co in coherence with each other. And boom, it, that was it. It was over for me. <laughs> okay. Very nice. Very nice. Robert Lee, you, you don't have to follow them. You can say whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, the most beautiful thing, the most beautiful thing about a woman is the ability to listen. You know, today, it, to me, you know, ladies don't understand the most. Most men want to be heard. You know what I'm saying? And if you have the ability to listen, and when I said listen, just don't sit there and let it just go through your ear. You really listening to what the man has to say and being able to think for yourself a lot of times. You know, a lot of times ladies feel like they have to uh, uh, always agree with a man on certain subjects and, and uh, different things that we may be discussing. That's the beautiful thing. The thing that we can, we can throw, we can bounce off of each other, different ideas, different opinions, and we can keep that going. The most sexy thing to me is, is her ability to think, you know, of course the physical attributes have to be there. We, Hold we on, know stop that. right there though. Stop uh -huh. right there though. Cause, cause mm -hmm. the question was about the physical attributes. <laughs> and, and, well, I mean, yeah, I'm a now me personally you know, myself. Me I, I, I'm a I'm a I'm a butt man. You know what I'm saying? I, I that's what I am. I'm a butt man. You know what I'm saying? But um, and the curves and all that, all that has to be there for me to be physically attracted to you. You know, but like like my brother, both my brothers are saying, once 
once the physical attraction's over with, I got to see what's upstairs. Because, you know, sometimes, you you know, you might be fine, but, you know, you go down a notch if it ain't nothing upstairs. That's just sure. that's just me. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, Cheryl. Cheryl's here from New York checking in. All right. So, look, um, mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm, we're going we're gonna to go get into more of the of the deeper levels of what you're what you what attracts you, what you find mm -hmm. beautiful. But I got a I got a quick video. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm not only bringing in the, the fellas uh, live here, but I, I got I got some video for you guys to, to follow. Hey, Steph. Steph said physical attraction only gets you to the door. Yes, yes, it is true. So I got some. Uh, I got. I got a video. I want to. I want to put up. Okay. What What do you look for in a woman? So here it comes. So I'm gonna. We gonna just uh, check it out. All right. Here we. Here we come. That's tough. Interesting question. Oh. <laughs> hey, can it, can we clarify the question a little bit more? What I look for in a woman. Uh so mm, that's tough. <laughs> My man's uh, looking for someone cute. That's tough. Uh someone who I can have fun with, someone who shares somewhat the same interests I do. And someone who uh I'm kind of introverted. I don't like talking to people that much. Someone I can be lazy with. That's what I like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what do I look for? Did we just talk about this? You know, I look for honesty and somebody who has a sense of, like, what they really actually care about, like, what they're really out for in life, and someone who will follow through on their dreams. That's what I look for. No, I'm pretty simple. I like a, just a simple woman that's uh, open-minded and uh, not high maintenance. So I, I already know the answer to this because I've asked myself this question before. And uh, I usually, the body draws me in, right? Like it appeals. And then I, I come to know the person. And then the body just kind of doesn't become as important anymore. But the actual person inside. So, yeah, that's just... That's how it is. <laughs> that's how I got married. So I know. That's why I knew who I was gonna marry. She just uh, unconditionally accepting, right? Like understanding, just brave and disciplined. You know, like just like a great example of love that I hadn't felt since like my grandmother. And you know, it's just like that kind of level of love that you feel from that from that person. Yeah, and I just I got that. <laughs> she has to be funny. Um, looks are good yeah um but you really have to like connect with them and like be a friend with them and um like with my girlfriend is we were friends before we were friends for six months before we became boyfriend and girlfriend so it's all about the connection i guess was there anything specific uh that happened then that made you want? uh not really i mean it it was the same it was just the title of being boyfriend and girlfriend, but like we still acted the same and we're still the same, so we're just friends. I was raised around a lot of women, so I usually tend to go to some, someone that's a little more independent, uh, kind of a strong woman, I would say, and someone that's, I guess, a little more uh, not so submissive type, because that's how I was raised really around women that are pretty strong, so that's kind of that kind of tend to go for. It's those, um, Kind of more the independent woman, I guess. <laughs> I just thought she was cool because um, most girls I was afraid right. to talk to. I'm gonna go I ahead and, and, and hit that pause button for a minute. So, uh, something that I that I caught with um, something that got my, got my attention with. Um, I didn't mean to, to drop it like yeah. that. Okay, look, so, something that got my attention that uh, I heard on the video, and even as I listened to you guys, right, and that is that. Everybody likes something different, mm -hmm. right? You you would you would say this, you know, and if we've heard it in the air that a man, um, uh, you know, we call high value men want a woman mm -hmm. who's like this, right? 
mm-hmm. uh, or or some men like like a man, a woman that's like that. Well, you just heard that that guy just said, "Look, he said he said I like a power woman. I like a <laughs> he 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 likes that um kind of go getter mm-hmm. kind of woman." And but meanwhile, that 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 guy who was a little earlier, he said, "I just want a basic woman." He said, "I just want mm-hmm. somebody who's who, who's uh, who's caring and sharing and wants to uh, just be a, a good friend to me. That's what I'm attracted to, you know. So, so to me, uh, that that tells me that uh, I think the best thing that a woman can be is herself, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you don't you don't have to follow what they say on Instagram or on Facebook and all these places. Like, you can just be yourself, and that, that makes you attractive." As you're mm-hmm. comfortable with being yourself and and kind of sharing yourself with people, so uh, fellas, let me, let me hear your thoughts on on maybe even the video, something that you heard on the video, yeah. and um, we'll take it from there. Well, um, one of the first things that I that I noticed in the video, like you said, every man was different. He, every man gave what they felt like they want in their lives. The advice that I would give to the women. A lot of times is just like what you said, be yourself. You know, you are not the gift. You are a gift for a particular man. See, a lot of times what ends up happening is, is that you feel like you are the gift and you want to give that gift to every man. You are a gift for a particular type of man. So a lot of times the woman that you are, it's, you know, you know who you are, the man that that is comfortable to you or can relate to you or can grow with you and help you grow. Because a lot of times what we do is we get into these relationships where we talk about growth. You have to be with somebody that knows how to to water you, how to cultivate you in a relationship. If you don't know who you are. And just like with men, every man likes something different and not every man is going to be attracted to you, but there's going to be a specific man that's attracted to you. So like you were saying, uh, 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 TK, you, you, you have to you have to be who you are and don't do a whole lot. of let me adjust where they said men want this and be who you are so that man can see you. Mm. Good stuff. Good stuff. Coach Richie, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I'm just 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 like you just mentioned, all, all the men were completely different on that. And the one that really got me, the one that said simple. He just wants a simple woman. Mm-hmm. And when you mm-hmm. when I hear simple from a man and says, look, I just want a simple woman. And then he went into it like somebody just caring, like you said, somebody just loving. Those things are simple. And when women get the gist and they understand it, they are like a gift, just like Robert was saying, they are a gift. And they hold the universe and they are powerful. They have the universe inside them. That's power. And when they know and they step into that power, who they are, they don't have to go get the lips, the butt, the breasts, the bow tie. They don't have to do anything because it's all natural. And I believe that's what every man wants is deeply that they want a natural, authentic, real, true woman that loves herself and likes herself and this all that. But the Instagram models is showing that we need to get the lips, the butts, the Botox and all that stuff. That's not appealing and attractive because that's not long term. That's only short term in the short term. And when you can understand who you are and you love yourself and liking yourself, that's what's going to be attractive and appealing to a man because you can't find a man. You can't search for one. You can only attract one into your life. And that's how it works. Good stuff. Good stuff. Freddie, what's your thoughts? Anything pop out to you on the video? Go ahead. I, I think I think Coach Richie took all my uh, answers. I'm gonna say, <laughs> <laughs> but but I, but I one thing I would say, man, you know, everybody's different, and what your style of taste is, you know, as a guy, um, is different. So you know, I'm I'm not here to, to judge your style or your taste, but what I will say, you know, far as for the women goes. Uh, don't fall into the society and the social norms that society places that stigma upon, upon uh, women. Um, like Coach Richard said, you don't have to get the butt lift. You don't have to get enhance your body in order for a man to accept you. You know, um, when you accept yourself and love yourself first, then all things will line up in in in, in order, and those things will fall in place. And a lot of times, we get out of order in life and society. And a lot of times, when we get out of that order. That life shifts different 
madness is upon us, but once we stay in alignment with ourselves and what what's our divine purpose, then and that alone we are then able to accomplish the goal that we want to accomplish, whether it's relationships or whether it's this job searching or whether it's this personal goal you want for yourself. Um, and so that would be my advice I would give uh, to the women that's listening tonight. Nice, nice, nice. So um, now, now let's let's go a little bit deeper, fellas. What are some thoughts that you've had about women that um, that you don't normally talk about? Like maybe something that you admire. You saw a woman, and it don't have, it don't have to be your woman, <laughs> but you saw a woman, and you said, you know what? I like that. I like that right there. That right there is what I believe attracts uh, what what men desire. That thing right there, um, brother Lee, you go first. Um, something that I admire. Um, let me think. Go to somebody. Let me let me think about that. All one. Right. Let me think about All that. Right. Bro one. Brother Richie, we go to you. How about that? <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a great question right there. So if I if I were to see a woman out there just really on her on just really on her stuff and men are coming up to her and she's not entertaining the man she's just really firm she's in her she's in her presence she's in her power she's embracing who she is she's loving herself liking herself and men are coming up to her she's just her she's not sadity she's not going to be little she's not going to degrade she's just going to be in her presence like look fellas this is where I'm at I'm in, I'm minding my business I'm enjoying the beach I'm enjoying the restaurant I'm enjoying my meal I'm enjoying my time right now this is my time this is me alone and that right there could be attractive as heck that can be pulling and inviting and like man what can you do and then the, the persistent the more persistent you are and you're seeing her and you're you're doing some different things and you're not coming out of character and you see she's really holding her space she's knowing who she is she's really honoring who she is she's respectful to herself respectful to her body respectful in her appearance and she's powerful and she knows she's powerful and she's embracing the power and she's loving all of it and this men are coming and she's just like hey this is where i'm at fellas i'm just minding my business i'm enjoying my time that's attractive and that's some beauty right there yeah 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 no but you said you said um respecting her appearance right so um now now what does that mean right it, it, does that mean like if if she wears a short skirt she's not respecting her appearance or like if, is she wearing like you know let's say she wears she wearing you know an outfit that she likes right mm -hmm. um like what's the where's the line on respectful appearance and and that's another great question i like that question i guess okay Okay. So now, because now we we talk about this all the time. Now, if you got your short skirt on and you flaunt and you and you you all in your power and you know you you fine, you know you sexy, you know you got the body and you and you wearing it, not flaunting it, but you wearing it and you embracing that and you respectful to yourself. You maybe you're sitting at the bar, your legs are closed, your legs are crossing. When you get up, you get up like you respecting your body. You're not getting up and opening all up and, and enticing and doing all the extra stuff, but you're wearing your short dress, you're wearing your mini skirt, you're wearing your clothes, whatever you're doing. If you got some Cleveland shorts, you're wearing it though. You're not just being disre completely disrespectful and flying and doing all the extra stuff, but you're wearing it. And that's it. That's all you're doing is wearing it and you're walking in your presence and your power. That's what I'm talking about. Nice. I like I, it. I like I, it, brother. Go ahead. I agree, with Coach. I agree with Coach. I mean, like he said, you know, you wearing it. You know, as men, ladies, understand, men, we can tell when the dress is the attention getter instead of what the mind is. Because we can tell when you, you know, yes, you wearing the short dress, you showing a little cleavage. But there are also, we know when you in that outfit for attention. We know what that is. And a lot of times, ladies, you don't understand when you dress that way, that's the only attention that you're going to get. I don't want nothing else. I don't want to get to know you. I don't want to know you on a mental level. I just want to know you on a sexual level. And I agree with Coach on that. It's you wearing it, but then there's, there's some – do it with a little class to it. You know what I'm saying? We can't – I know a lot of ladies, you can't help what God gave you. You know what I'm saying? But you don't have to show me everything that God gave you either. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> So a lot of times, ladies, you understand that you you can dress with a little class behind it, but be careful of being overly revealing. 
Good point. Good point. Uh, uh, Freddie, what's your thoughts on that? I know you heard something there. Oh, um, you know what? Well, and I'm gonna go back before I was married, man. Um, when I used to get <laughs> sometimes rejected, man, I used to be like, "Why was it me?" You know what? What, what happened between that? And when I got older, I, I wanted to know what was behind the rejection or what was behind, like you say, what why she dressed like that. So I wanted to get to know like the mental aspect of her, and then once I understand the mental part of her. I realized the body will follow at the same time. <laughs> so you don't have to try yeah. hard uh, uh, with it. You know what I'm saying, ladies? And, 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 and as a man uh, spoke about it, you know, you don't have to do all that to, to grab our attentions. And I think, you know what I'm saying, once certain women, I don't say all women because, you know, certain women get it, but the certain women that are still out there that's trying to get it like that, yeah, it, you know, we're real simple. You know, guys want to do a whole lot to, to get us. Um, and so I think once we once women understand that, I think life would go a whole lot easier for everybody. Yeah. Well said. Well said. So h- how about, um, you know, uh, uh, normally when they talk about attraction, right? And listen, mm-hmm. amongst, amongst our community, there is a big issue with hair, right? For some reason, okay. hair hair is seen as um kind of it, it i think it's even scriptural a, a woman's crown her hair is her crown um and and it becomes the thing that you know many men are attracted to i, I don't i don't think i know any man that is not attracted to hair that doesn't like to see a woman with nice nice looking hair right um so what 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 do you what do you, what do you, what's your thoughts on that? Like can you like do you like it short, long, uh, locked up? Like like what's your thoughts? I mean this I know this is superficial. This is a superficial question, but guess what? It's a superficial question that women have every day in their minds. <laughs> what am I going to do with right. my hair? <laughs> okay, so well, what, what's your what's your feelings on hair in general on a woman, uh, and then like kind of like 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 what what's your, maybe your preference on that? Personally, myself, I like natural hair, but I don't have I have dated women with weave. But the thing I don't like about the weave is the unnecessary weave. You know, we we don't have to have we don't have you don't have to have it all the way down to your thigh. We 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 get a little bit overboard. You know, you you don't have to have a horse's mane. You know what I'm saying? So we we don't we don't have to go that route. But there's nothing wrong with it when it's overly done it's just like when we talk about the dress it's 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 okay but for me as a man i like natural hair but i don't i have dated women with weed but i like it you know i like it natural but when it comes to the weed uh ladies kind of tone that down too because again every man is different but most of the men i have talked to is that unnecessary weed all that you know you don't need to do it like that <laughs> <laughs> okay all right. Uh, Freddie, what's your thoughts? Talk to me about the hair. You know what, Kevin? I, you know, I've always loved women with long hair, man. You know, the, the natural mm-hmm. look, too. Um, and, and, of course, my wife has long hair. so. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not discrediting the women that have short hair because, uh, you know, I think it depends on the facial structure that you can work with, with which each hair type, you know, because, you know, some long hair might not fit certain women some some women look great with short hair um some women look great with locks or dreads so uh, you know I, i'm not discrediting that at all but for me personally i've always liked the long natural look man that's always been this sexy to me for for some reason that's just been my preference <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right brother richie what's your thoughts hey yeah i'm, I'm not absolutely just like both of them is this the natural long look and i believe because my mom has natural long pretty black hair and i believe that's where it all stemmed from seeing that and then just wanting to model that yes and that that's just what it is and you also got to understand and i think freddie said that too it doesn't matter if you have your hair short if you have your hair long it's, it goes back to the dress thing you wearing it as long as you wear it and you know you you know you are powerful and you wearing your hair whether you have it long whether you have it short you have it in a style whatever it may be as long as you're wearing it and you're comfortable with it and you're going to attract that guy that you going to attract it to your life right nice 
we got my my man brother Sims is in the building. <laughs> Talk hey, to what's us going on, man? <laughs> man, I'm just listening. Man, this is a great conversation. Um, I mean, I'm gonna just say for me, jumping straight into the fray. Natural hair is 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 where it's at for me. I've I don't know. Like he said, there's something about it, right? I don't know where the idea came from where women walk around with the insecurity of men want to see them in the weaves and whatever. Now, here's my thing. I know they're going to say, well, y'all looking still. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. But but if that's the only option presented to me, then you're still beautiful. God made you beautiful that way. So I'm still going to look at you regardless of how you present yourself because that's the option you're giving me. But if you're walking with your friend that's more natural, just know your eyelashes that flap like this and that, mm-hmm. that weave that you want that is straight down to your ankles. I'm going to talk to your friend. And you might think you look better than your friend. It, it, and that's okay. You can feel that way. Maybe a lot of guys have approached you and made you feel like that's the number. I'm, I'm going to talk to your friend. And, and that's, that's the bottom line. I'm going to buy your friend a drink. And then she's going to be like, can you buy my friend a drink? And I'm be like, is she even real? Because all that fake stuff she got on, you know, I'm just saying, I know y'all going to want to throw some tomatoes at me in the comment section, but I'm just keeping it 100. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, man. Let me see. Let me make sure we, we got it. We got everybody. Okay, good. All right. Hey, hey let, let's, let me check out a little bit more of this, uh, this video. I want to hear more of your thoughts on this. Okay. And uh, like she was pretty, she was awesome. Like uh, I liked her. I, I, I don't. Know, I just liked her features and stuff. But uh, the main thing was she was awesome to talk to. And um, but me, me and her weren't gonna get married, but because uh, she she didn't want to be with someone. She had already been with someone who um, that she was planning on getting married. And she asked me like she didn't want to keep dating if I wasn't willing to be commit to her, like to to be married. And then um, I actually got saved like. Uh, about a day or two later, and uh, I really feel like the Lord was telling me to marry her, and it was, it was really, I just, she was just an awesome person, I just loved her, uh, I, it's, it's a hard question for me to answer, like, uh, exactly what I find in a woman, because she was really my first girlfriend, so I wasn't really, like, looking too much, like, uh, like her height or her, uh, her skin color or anything, I just, um, I just wanted someone who was, like, my friend, and uh, it'd be cool to, to spend the rest of our life together, and so, uh, yeah, so we got married. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, like the the go to mainstream answer is uh, hold, hold, hold on. Let me. Let me I need. I need to. Stuff. I need to stop but this video because <laughs> we okay. gotta talk about this. <laughs> we we gonna have to talk about that, uh, fellas. Yeah. Uh, here, hold on. Let me let me get us all back. Um, we gotta talk about that. My man just said. Um, he met a woman. He 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 gave his life to the Lord, and mm-hmm. and in that time, he said he felt like the Lord wanted him to marry that woman. So they got married after a couple of months, and and he, and then he said, "But she was really my first girlfriend." <laughs> and uh, so so what what what's your what's your thoughts about that? I I, I see I see red flags all over that, but uh, what? Yeah, I, I do too, but. But but again, you know, just like with Coach at the top, and with my brother, he met his wife and married her in fifty five days. It's possible, but when you're dealing with guys like that, I mean, a lot of times, man, you have to live your life a little bit. You got to have a, a few mistakes in your life to be able to have a barometer of what you're going to do in life. Uh, just like Coach was speaking about his wife, fifty five days. But I'm pretty sure Coach had some experiences in life. He know exactly when he saw her, they had those conversations. Yeah, that's my wife right there. Because there is a barometer. I have experienced something. When you said that's my first girlfriend, well, is that the first? Is that your first? You know, because there are men out there like that. that This is their first sexual experience. Is it that this is your first time sexual and, and she was your first girlfriend, so God told you to marry her? I mean, what's what's your barometer? And sometimes, but that, it does happen to some people. But yeah, there's some red flags behind that. You know, I would say 
but he had to go a little bit more in depth into it. All right. Brother Richie, what, what's your thoughts? You, you, you the 55 day man. <laughs> what yeah, you, you think about right, what that man. brother said? Uh, just, uh, just like Robert said, yes, I definitely had experiences. I, and I, I knew what I wanted, and I asked the questions to my wife, and, and I really, really pushed the pressure on this full court pressure the whole time. And I me asking questions because I knew what I wanted. But this particular situation right here for that guy, that he just fell for this, I mean, just straight flesh. I, I just believe that he fell for some flesh. And if we dig a little deeper, we know it was a, tra a, a traumatized experience that led them to that and made him make that or had him make that decision. Because when he says it, he got saved and he got baptized and he felt the Lord have wanted him to get married, which is we don't know anything about that. That's only him and his power, his higher power, mm -hmm. God, whoever, whatever he's believing in. But for me, if I'm looking at that and I want to dissect that and I, I want to grab it, I just would ask a question like, what made you think that she is the one and you don't even know what you're wanting? You don't even know you yet. You don't know what you're wanting. You don't know what you're, you don't have any experiences. Like how do you, and what makes you think that she is the one that you want to marry because you're great friends? Because we do know that great friends get married and they get divorced right away. They're friends for 10 years, they get married for a year and they're divorced. These things happen mm -hmm. all the time. That's what I would want to know in that setting because it's a whole lot of, red flags if we want to really dissect yeah. them and break them all down but that would be my first initial thought on that and just ask the question what makes you think that she is the one for you mm -hmm. and what you'd have no experience with any other women in your life and you never dated you never liked or any of those things so that would be my question yeah my man josh he's on the facebook side he said my man was down bad <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 he he Mm. My man, <laughs> my man said it was my first girlfriend, and I just, I just felt the. Sometimes you got some men out here looking for mama. You never know; <laughs> yeah. she may have treated him like mama, reminded him of mama, big mama. Yeah, and uh, absolutely. The next thing he, yeah, the next thing you know, oh, let me grab her, let me get with her because this is, you know, and a lot of times you, we got to be careful of that, you know. Um, we talk about it as men, but also women, you know, yeah, women, you need to be, you need to get to know the man, um, the person that you are with. You just don't jump up and do that. But you got to have a, a little life experience. Like I said, you got to, I'm not saying that you have to, uh, we talking about body counts and this, that, and another, but you got to have a little experience in life so you can have a barometer to go off. You just don't jump up because somebody asks you, to marry them, the first man that comes along, marry me, and you say yes. And like like Coach was saying, the next thing you know, in less than two years, and, and by the say in less than five years, you're divorced. <laughs> because you didn't get to know the individual. You when you marry them, you you now you're saying, I didn't know. You know, I did that that type of phrase. I didn't know. I I didn't know this. Well, you didn't take the time out to get to know the person. You didn't court the person. You know what I'm saying? You didn't you didn't get to you. There was no vulnerability. There was no uh, uh, there was no accountability. There was no real questions asked. You know what I'm saying? You were just, you know, just like with him. Let me find, you know, I supposed to be married. That's what they say in the church. Yeah, that's a good thing to promote uh, marriage and this. that, and that. But you need to know who you are as a man, because are you capable of being a husband? Yeah. God told you that uh, uh, that that was your wife. But. Are you a husband? Are you ready to be a husband? Are you ready to take on the responsibility of a wife, uh, the the children, the leadership role? You know, you say you in church, so it, you know, yeah, you say you was baptized and God is ahead, but are you ready? You know, so it's the same with women. You you got to get to know who you're dating um, uh, in that period of time, and dating just means exactly what that is: dating. Once you get into the courtship stage, but along those those stages that you go through uh, leading up to marriage, you need to be asked some real questions. And a lot of us, we don't do that. We just want to do the theatrics of a wedding. Right. We just want to say we got a ring on our finger and we walk down the aisle and uh, we had a honeymoon. Then when you come home, that's real life. Yeah. So yeah, you yeah. got to be you got to be prepared. Yeah, that brother there. There's some issues there. There's some red flags there. I would even say for the woman. <laughs> yeah, so so oh shoot. <laughs> I didn't mean to cut y'all mm -hmm. out. Um 
you know, one one of the things that I that I see when I when I see this thing um, as we talk about beauty, I see a lot of us as men getting deceived, right? We getting deceived. We get deceived. Okay. We, we get deceived by the from the from the hair, from the makeup, from the, the from the extra body parts. If you live here in Atlanta, boy, you don't, you don't know what you're looking at. <laughs> Right. And, and we get deceived from from this outer shell of what a person wants you to see, you know. Mm-hmm. So, so I think that's I think that's one of the reasons I think it's actually dangerous to be in the position that like that guy was in where he's in a hurry to get married to some woman, you know, because he says God had said that this is the one. Well, yeah, God may have said that is the one. But God didn't say that's the one for right now. That like mm-hmm. God didn't say jump off the off the cliff with no parachute, <laughs> right? If, mm-hmm. if you say if you say God God said that's the one, okay. Then so so what what, what you hurrying for? Don't you, don't you want to make sure that you got a solid foundation in getting to know the person? Because you said mm-hmm. this this is this is this is of God, right? So. Uh, but as my man Josh said over here, um, he said we need to get that boy on the, we need to get him on on the show <laughs> to find out what, what's really going on. He said he just wanted to smash, but he wanted to keep her keep her. Uh, he said maybe he just wanted to smash, but also respect what the Bible says. So he got married and sealed the deal. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's some brothers out there that play that game. He just wanted. To I mean, smash. some. Yeah, that's that's some brothers out here been divorced two or three times, and you asked them about their wives. Those those women said they was waiting for marriage. So, well, let me go and knock this on off. Let me go and put a ring on the finger. And let me go and do this. And a lot of guys out here are doing that, you know. And that's that's what it is. And a lot of times, ladies, like we talk about from a religious point of view, we got a lot of ladies that they are influenced by the church. They influenced by the the church mothers and and it sometimes the conversation so they are trying to hurry up and be married so nobody be looking at them that insecurity well baby you 26 you 36 you 41 why ain't you married and that's putting a lot of pressure on the lady so the first man that asked them to marry them you know they jump at it you know and that's a bad thing but just like with this brother yeah same thing so, not so only let, that. let me hear from you guys. Uh, what was that, Sims? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me hear your, your thoughts about this, about the idea of the the illusion that we follow. I, I'm going to say not only the the church, right, but women have this so to speak time clock. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but it's, there's this time this time clock that uh, if they don't have a kid by a certain time, the kid's going to come out the form. So that fear on top of God's wrath mixed with uh, trying to find a good man. So if they think a man is a good man, well, because he got some money, he's a good man. You know, that's, and I'm just going to say that's for America's standard. <laughs> he got some money, he a good man. Why, 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 why I got to wait? Because I'm, I'm 35 and I don't want my kid to come out the form. Plus, the people in the church looking at me like I'm crazy. Uh, so I'm going to just go ahead and, uh, yeah, I need him to propose. <laughs> and then and then this man is like, well, she looked good, and my friends approve. I might as well go ahead and do it. And, I, and I've always admired that conversation. Like, when I listen to women talk about marriage, they talk about marriage as this new beginning. Oh, my God, we're going to have a big house. And- Get fans who are gonna hold hands, get down the street, and when a man talks about it, it's almost like the end of the world. It's the, well, I don't did everything, you know, I might as well just go ahead and just, just get this thing done and over with. And I and I think to myself, like, you know, what is the rush? If I if you if, if I'm gonna be with you for the rest of my life, which sounds like a long time, what is the rush to get married? If I'm planning, why can't I take the time? to build a relationship, to see if we relate with each other well. Why can't I properly court you on these dates so I can gather data from these dates to see if you really are the one? And okay, God told me she's the one, but did I wait to hear the rest of the instruction or I was like, what you said she's the one? All right, I'm gone. 
And he said, wait, I, you didn't let me finish. Let me finish. It's that part. So it, it's all of these things that I'm looking at society and I'm just like, where do we lose the way? And I think the first step, the first thing where we lost our way is really understanding what a relationship with is. And if we want to say we're really in the church, what is your relationship like with God? So when you go to when you go to work, like when you think about a real relationship, that's your partner. You call them every day. You be on the phone late at night or you talking to God late at night and go, no, God, you go to sleep. No, 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 you go to sleep. Nah, I'm going to hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. Are you doing that with God? Are you saying, God, I'm going to work. Can you come with me to work today? God, I'm going down to this party. You should come hang with me. Are we doing that? Do we really have a relationship to even understand what a relationship is? And that's my thought. I'm, I'm just going to drop it right there. All right. All right. All right. Uh, so let, let me hear from uh, from Freddie. Freddie, what, what, what's your thoughts on, on, the, on the illusion and the things that we are taught? Uh, my man Josh is over here. He said, um, how many marriages did we grow up with? Um, unhappy people he said stayed together for the kids and really screwed our view of marriage mm -hmm. life kids house etc he said we all need to need therapy to unlearn bad examples mm -hmm. freddie what, what's what, what's your thoughts on this can you hear me brother <laughs> you might have froze up so that, yeah all right go ahead brother lee well, to the to the comment that was in time out, you know what, you know, about us, the bad examples. Well, yes, some of us came out of homes that, you know, wasn't the best. Uh, we didn't see the best examples of a marriage or we didn't see the best examples of of a man and woman working together. But in these days and times, what we what I think is getting too loud is that that situation, you know, uh, we got bad examples. There are good examples out here. There, there are coaches out here that, you know, things like you said, unlearn what you need to relearn. You know, um, I, I think marriage is a positive thing, but we got to ask ourselves again, just like we got to learn how to love ourselves and care for ourselves. You got to ask yourself that question. And like we said, we specifically talking to the ladies. You got to ask, yourself, do you want to be married? Why is it that you want to be married? You know what I'm saying? We got to we got to ask ourselves this question because marriage might not be for everybody. You know what I'm saying? And we have to be real about that. But, you know, if you're just getting married for the theatrics or to be able to say somebody asked you or you've been asked in a relationship that, that it never turns out any good. Because, like I said, any man can marry you. You know, it is not if the man asks you, all you got to do is say yes and go to the courthouse. You marry. You know what I'm saying? You ain't you ain't got to do the lavish wedding, but do you really know why you want to be married as a woman? Same with a man. You know why is it that you want to be married? What what? Why are you looking for a wife? What is your what is your reason behind that? And until you can figure that out, I would always say tell people stay single and learn. If you don't know why you want to get married, just don't walk around here asking women to marry you and later stop at, stop accepting proposals. And this, that, and another. Find out the real. Find out who you are as an individual. You might find out you don't want to be a husband. You might find out you don't want to be a wife. Fact, 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 fact. All right. Let, let me let me let's get let's get some more of this uh this video in here. Um, I wanna I wanna continue on and see what else we can grab from there. Uh, let me see. Here we go. I look at her eyebrows and her teeth. Like those two are on point. It's, it's a winner. <laughs> My man said eyebrows and, and teeth. Have, That's it. Good person, nice <laughs> people. You know, that's what I look for. What do I look for? Yeah. Uh, companionship, uh, complicity, reliability, and uh, uh, love. Uh, I think creativity, uh, intelligent, and a Democrat. <laughs> for me, it's the most important. <laughs> The way she treats other people. And, uh, yeah. She has to love my family. If she doesn't love me, like my family. Uh, honestly, loyalty is uh, a big one. I mean, I want somebody that's going to be as loyal as I am to them, you know? Um, and that, uh, you know, if 
there's so many ideas on monogamy and uh, polyamory and stuff like that that are out there. And uh, I don't know. It's just it's one of those things where I, I, I just kind of prefer a, uh, a one-on-one type of relationship. Uh, for me, it matters. It also helps, you know, with, uh, you know, being a, a divorced dad with a single kid and stuff like that. You know, I, I think that uh, it's important to only see one person um, and to see me happy as well. So I think that's, yeah. All right. So, so let's let's hold on that, right? So, so let's talk a little bit about about family, like, you know, when the the woman who's for you, right? How important is it for her to um, blend with your family? Like, how important was is it for, you know, where did that fall on the scale for you uh, when it came, comes to you either selecting a woman for your life or the woman that you have selected for your life? How important is her getting along with your family. Uh, we'll start with uh, Brother Richie, Coach Richie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. A, that's a value. That's a value that I hold dearly. His family is important. Her family is important to her. And it's got to be important to me. And if it's, my family is important, it's got to be important to her. So that's a value. That's like number one or number two on the list is family. And we have these three core values and we're going to put our spirituality number one. We're going to put family number two. We're going to put contribution number three. A family is really important. If your in-laws don't like you, it's going to be it's going to be a challenge for you to get in. I mean, to get involved and have that intimate time with their. With their with their child, like in my case, my wife. If the in-laws don't like me, it's going to be a challenge because she's going to want to spend time with them. She's going to want to hang out with them. She's going to want to be around them. She's going to want to do things with them. And sometimes it requires both of us to do that. If the in-laws don't like you, it could be a challenge if you're not mentally stable and mentally strong and you didn't prepare and you didn't ask these questions. How is your family? What has your family been through? What have your family done? Is your parents still married or they're divorced? How is that? If you're not really engaged and in tune with that and asking the questions, then you, when you, when it happens and you, fall into the blinders and you're like, whoa, what happened? What it is? So family is really important, especially to me. And I know a lot of people that a lot of people that I, I talk to and work with, family is important to them and the, the in-laws just don't like them. And then it's, it draws a wedge between the two of them. So that's when you got to really get together and get that aligned and make sure you honor your values. If family is important, make sure you honor that, especially women. You got to make sure you honor your family if that's important. And you need to let your spouse know, or your partner know that it's important for you to spend time with your family, spend time with your friends, because if you don't do that at the mm-hmm. beginning, then you suppress it because you like them because of their status, their their looks or the career, the car, the job, or whatever the case may be. All that stuff will eventually go away. And then you suppressing all of your feelings and your emotion towards your family and your friends. And then you want to hang out with them, then it's going to draw a wedge and a fight. So that family is important. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, how about you, Brother Lee? Well, I do. Talk to him. I do agree because about family is important. Uh, but one of the things I would add now, the flip side, my my opinion, yes, make sure that you know, find out if they family oriented. How do they feel about family? How do how what is the dysfunction? What is the drama? What is the issues that you have within your family, if any? But I would also be careful of, for me, I would say this. Um, at a certain point in time, I can't concern myself with whether my sister like the woman that I'm dating or the woman that I'm going to marry. Because that is, now she might not like her. That's your personal business, whatever it is. Maybe we can have a conversation and we can discuss it. But a lot of times when you allow your family to have that much control and that much say, so I'm not saying that with Coach Sam, I'm just saying um, have that much control. Well, my mama don't like you. My daddy don't like you. So I don't know if our relationship can go anywhere. That is where your parents having control over what you're doing. And a lot of times if your daddy likes a dude or mama likes a guy or whatever the case may be, that might not be the best guy for you. It's somebody that your mama like. It's somebody your daddy like. It may be something about them that doesn't fit you. Uh, You you might not be a good fit for this person. So we got to be careful. Yes, family is important. Need to know if you're a family man or you're a family woman. Yes, you need to know that. But be careful of well, the in-laws don't like, I really don't care uh, about the in-laws. In-laws don't have to like me as long as the woman loves me and want to be with me. I don't really care what your mother, th- mother or father think of me. 
<laughs> see, see, look, fellas, this, this is why I like having the, this dialogue, right? You can hear from all angles. You're going to hear from all angles. Um, you know, I, 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 can, I, I agree with both you and Brother Richie <laughs> in mm-hmm. that, you know, it's important. And, and at the same time, you got you to gotta live the life of the couple and not uh, connecting, you know, not being uh, led around by your mama and, and everything that she thinks about all me. Go down. <laughs> you know, so how about you, Freddie? Is your shot? What's, what's, what's your thoughts on the family? Uh, you know, you, it, how important is it for you and uh, you to get on with your, your your wife's family or your or your wife's family? You know, right, vice versa. What, what's your thought? That, my, I, I think it's, it, it's extremely important because um, it, it makes it a lot easier when both parties get along, but. You know, in the ideal world, realistically, we would like that, but let's be real, it doesn't happen like that. Um, and when it doesn't happen like that, then you know, you have to focus on the two of you. Um, because you know, I married her because it was something about her that I like, even though I would like her family or she would like my family to like me or her. But if it doesn't work that way, then we realize that God aligned us together for a reason, and it's not because of the family that we're together, but it's because of the destiny or the destination I chose to be with her. And a lot of times, I think we get caught up in like, you know, we spend a lot of time focusing on why mom don't like me or why dad doesn't like me, and then once you lose your focus off your spouse or your relationship, you, you put the focus more on the family. And then, you know, you're not dating the family, but you're dating and marrying the person that you're with. And a lot of times we lose focus of that and, and, and place our soul goal on, like, pleasing and trying to accommodate mom or trying to accommodate dad because we want all parties to like me. And it doesn't work that way. And we have to be okay with that. And I think once we're okay with that and then we can move forward, whether we stay together or whether we're not, but at least we know we made the best decision for ourselves. Well said. Well said. Well said. Brother Sims, you with us? I'm, I'm with you guys, man. Share your, um, share your thoughts. Family, how important? It's it's a weird thing for me, man, because like my family dynamic is, is weird as it is. So I love my family, but I don't think it's it's enough for me to to place her even on that scale. Like, you know, because whether or not they like her, mm-hmm or she gets along with them, I, I think it doesn't really change my views or my value. Like, I love my family, but by the end of the day, I don't give them dominion over my life or permission to make me feel any kind of way about who I date. And I don't care if they like the person I'm dating or not. I'm just, I'm weird like that, I guess. I don't know, I'm probably the only person that don't have that big family value in my system, so... It's it's a hit and a miss for me. If I was to scale it, it would probably be third, fourth on my list. You know, she definitely got to be good with God, good with my with my kid, and then yeah, I guess then my family somewhere along the line after that. I hear you. Just being honest. I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. Now I could tell you this: um, I I would never be with a woman that did that my mama didn't like. <laughs> I would never. I, I just. I just couldn't. I couldn't do it. Like, uh, if 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 my mama walked up, and you know, I walk come walking up with some woman uh, on my arm, and my mama gave me that look. <laughs> she she gave me that look like, uh uh-uh. uh you know. Now now my mother, she she can. She's one of them people. She can find something kind almost. You know, in anybody. You know. But um, if she if she really told me, son, no, no, son, this is how my mom talked. No, son, <laughs> no, no, son. <laughs> and I, I, listen, I I'd be like, you know what? My mama um, has figured out a lot of things. It helped me figure out a lot of things in my life. And if she sees something in this one right here, and she say no. Then, no, it is. Yeah, and, 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 it, it, and for me, it would have to be that way. Who, 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 who's responding? Was that was, you, was that you? Go ahead. 
No, you don't you don't dismiss old wisdom. Now, like we said, a man, a man recognizes another man. So you we understand. And just like you said with your mama, your mama can see something that you don't see. You know, a lot of times, and I understand that you pay attention to that old wisdom, you know, and that that is a good thing. But like I said again, for me, you know, you have to weigh the two out. You have to pay attention to what mama told you. Look at that. Pay attention to that because that might not be the right one. She might be on point because a lot of times we do do that. We ignore what old folks tell us that what old folks tell us how to, you know, how to live, how to look for a man, how to look for a woman. We ignore it because we said we in 2021. That was 1930. That was 1950. We have had everything that's going on in 2021 was going on in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. Ain't nothing new out here right now, you know. So, yeah, you pay attention to what your family said. But a lot of times what I be pointing out a lot of times I have with conversation with some brothers I have had. A lot of times they allow their family to control what's going on. Their mother. A lot of times mothers uh, get to the place. They don't want no other woman with their with their son because they, when the son was growing up, they had made their son their man. So any woman that, that shows up ain't good enough for my son. So she always going to find something wrong with that. And I'm not saying for you uh, on that situation, but that would be something that I would pay attention to. But y'all, I agree with you. Never disregard old wisdom. Right, right. So my man Josh over here, he, he asked, who would you have to bring home that your mother would say no? He, he said, what qualities? Um to me, just just somebody that's from the streets. My my parents, mm -hmm. like I, you know, my parents are pastors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they grew up, you know, I grew up in a pastor's mm -hmm. home, and um, they they have certain certain ways of thinking that you know, she she knows her son, <laughs> and she knows his the path that he's on, as, as well as um, not that I live for her, nor that I, you know I'm my own man, mm -hmm. uh, but. You know, yeah. You know, she there, there's a certain uh, expectation that she would like to see per, the person matched up with her son, and um, you know, I, I <laughs> Josh, I, I can't give you all the attributes just now. You know, thank God I'm married. <laughs> so, um, but um, you know, I, my, my wife is one of those uh, high value women. <laughs> with the with the big job and the and the big career and the and the high power, but she wasn't back then. But um, but but she, right. um, my my mother loved her. My mother loved her, and she was like, she was like, yes, her, yes. <laughs> so we we went with Mama's idea, and my Mama did not them. Hey, not them women you had back in college with as a cue in this that not not them gay. No, no, oh, don't bring no. that up. <laughs> I, was, I was very selective, buddy. I th I want to say my mother's only met maybe one other person, only only one, one only one other one. And I was going to marry her, <laughs> so you know, very selective, very selective. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, man. So uh, we we got a couple comments here. Yes. What else? Yeah. Uh, the sister said. Uh, Talked about the, the old wisdom. Pay attention. Good yeah. stuff. Good stuff. And that's, I know you're trying to read. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you good. Go ahead. Say, that that's. I think that's another one of our problems in in this generation right now. And it's time. You know, we think we know that this is a new era. There is nothing that we're doing that's brand new. Put the, we act like polygamy is brand new in 2021. You had polygamy relationships in the 30s and 40s. This is nothing new. You know, we, we act as if, you know, they always want to say that, you know, men are not like they was back in my granddaddy and all that. Yes, they are. Brothers, brothers back then were working nine to five. They had their own business. They were doctors. They were lawyers. The same way they are in 2021. There are men that want to that want to take care of their families, that God is their head. You know, those those men do exist. But again, you have to be prepared to if, if you got to ask yourself, are you that traditional woman or are you a modern woman? And you got to know who you are, because, like I said, there's nothing wrong with being modern. 
There's nothing wrong with the career. There's nothing wrong with chasing the bag and this, that, another. But you can't be modern and want part of the traditional. You either going to be the traditional white or you're going to be the modern day white. That's why I say you got to get to know you. And like I said, we, we disregard old wisdom. I remember something that was given to me um, by uh, a sister that I was dating. And then I never forgot it because she was telling her, her my grandma how her grandma explained it to her. She said, you know what? If you just want you a man, go down there under that bridge. There are plenty of men up under that bridge down there. Get them from under that bridge. Take them home. Get his hair cut. Wash them up. Buy him some new clothes and this, that, another. You got you a man. But what kind of man do you have? In other words, you got to know what type of what type of man that you desire, that fits you, your personality. And a lot of times, like I said, ladies, you're doing too much test driving out here. You need to know exactly if you want an Audi, do you want a Ford, do you want a Chevrolet? You need to break it down to that level. You know, you out here test driving all these cars and still ain't getting nothing to just depend on them. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Hey, hey, let's catch one more piece of this video, and hey, we're gonna we're gonna be okay. finished with this video for the night. Uh, I, I want to get some more of your, you guys' thoughts on um, mm -hmm. on what, what the brothers what they sharing. I, I love having dual dual thoughts and dual ideas. There we go. Uh, for me, it's brains all day. Um, I like seeing like how smart she is, because uh, then I can have a conversation with them, and then they can keep my interest for a long period of time. The big things, I guess, for myself is finding someone that is actually interested in helping others and wanting to make a difference, whether that be going and volunteering mm -hmm. with a charity or just finding something that they're passionate about that will actually make a difference and help others. What I look for in a woman is that she knows who she is and what's greater than her in this life that she's for. Just love each other. The simplicity, I would say. So are there any deal breakers for you? Uh, cleanliness. Organization. They're very, I have some issues, you know. <laughs> um, that's it. Yeah, that's it. I have this adventurous personality, so I like an adventurous girl um, that I can't say my jokes, and she will laugh at my jokes. And, and someone that, I don't know, can, would like to stay with me for the rest of my life. <laughs> Intelligence and love and uh, open-mindedness are the absolute biggest turnoffs. I have my own uh, uh, philosophy about that. More than what I'm looking at I'm, in a woman is what I can offer a woman. So, because many times we said, oh, I'm looking this, I'm looking that, but uh, what can, can I offer as a person? So for me, more important, what I'm looking in a woman is what can I offer to a, to a woman? When looking for a significant other, I don't really look at all because I think it doesn't matter who you're with. It's just like um, a lot of compromise and working together to make a relationship work. And no one wants to compromise, myself included. So that's why you can be more happy if you just stay by yourself. <laughs> He ain't going. Okay. <laughs> My man just said, forget about it. Just stay for, stay, <laughs> stay to yourself and you don't have to worry about nothing. <laughs> All right. So so you guys uh give me give me your feedback on that. And I got then I'm I got a question. Um uh, it's something that I heard that I'm gonna pose to the group. So uh what's something that stood out in, uh for, to you uh that you heard just now? Uh Freddie, you go first. Hey, I'm gonna go to the last guy and <laughs> say study yourself. <laughs> I think you gotta know yourself and, and know what you want out of life. A lot of times, you know, we as people are not, are not sure of what we want, and then we begin to settle uh, too often. Uh, men and women, but more particularly, I know it's from the women that a lot of times when we're not at a certain point of our lifetime, we just settle. And I think we have to get past that settling and realize that. You know, knowing yourself is important and loving yourself is important and being there for yourself, despite if no one else will be there, despite if I don't have a, a significant other or, or, or if I don't have a wife, or I don't have a husband. 
And I think a lot of times we have to be comfortable within yourself to know yourself, to love yourself and be there for yourself. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, Coach Richie, uh, tell me something that you heard in, uh, just now in that clip that, uh, that caught your attention. Well, I, I, I mean, there was a few of them that, that, that caught my attention, but the one dude that, that, that spoke about intelligence, and, and I think for a lot of women, they, they confuse intelligence with intellect. And intellect is just based off of like survival of the fittest. That's our survival piece of the brain is our intellect. Mm -hmm. But intelligence, it goes a lot deeper and further. Like intelligence is our body, like our heart beats 100,000 beats a day. I mean, we have white blood cells that are protecting us from virus and back. That's intelligence. And we got to define which, what do we really want? We want somebody with intellect or we want somebody with some intelligence. And we have to break that down and really understand because now it can, it can really confuse a woman to if it's intellect or if it's intelligence, what do you really, what are you wanting? Because as men, we just surface level and we only operate from the surface level only. And we don't explain anything. We just put something out there and maybe we don't even know what we're saying. We just heard it. Maybe we heard it from a friend or our mentor or our father or a family member or somebody. We heard this terminology and we want to, now we want to use it. And we misusing it and we don't even understand what we want. So that's a big one that really struck because I hear a lot of men come to me and say, man, I want somebody that's intelligent. They got to have an intelligence, bro. I don't, I don't want anybody. I'm like, well, define that for me. Break that down. Mm -hmm. So now we can understand. So women can not be confused off of his intellect or his intelligence. So that was one that really caught me. Yeah, that's good, bro. That's good. That's good. Brother Lee, what, what's the what, 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 from the video that caught you? One of the brothers, when he talked about, you know, I, I just want to know, I think he said, like, I want to know what I have to offer to a woman. Uh, I, ladies, I would always tell you, you must have a vision. You must have a plan. You must have goals for your own life. Because if you don't have any vision, you don't have any goals, you don't have any plans. You know what I'm saying? You'll be able, you're going to get on somebody's boat that you don't want to be on that's going in no direction because you don't have a vision. Because a lot of men, you know, like I said with men, even though we're talking about women, I tell my brothers this probably this in the chat, you got to have a vision on your life. You got to have some plans. You got to have some goals. You got to know where you're going. And sometimes when you meet that woman, you got to figure out where she's going. Because when y'all met each other, y'all probably was coming from different directions. And she's probably going to some, going to a certain place in her life. Where where are you going? Can y'all two do this journey together? You know what I'm saying? So one of the things that stuck out with me, I think men are afraid today to ask a woman, what do you bring to the table? And a lot of women get offended because really, to be honest with you, like we was talking about early on the cast here, um, a lot of times, ladies, a lot of ladies, not all, but a lot of ladies feel like, uh, the behind, the chest, the eyelashes, the weave. That's what I bring to the table and sex. And a lot of women do not understand that the, as men, men, they have progress as doing the work. They want more than that when you come to the table. So you got to have vision. You got to have plans. You got to have goals for self, especially as a woman, because if you don't have any, you're going to get on anybody's game plan. And like I said, you could be on a boat that's going nowhere. Mm, good stuff, bro. Good stuff. You know what? What caught my um, my attention was um, the guy talked about deal breakers. He was very. It was very, real quick. He talked about deal breakers and meaning like like you know how much will you endure, right? Mm -hmm. What 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 is the point where you will that you say you know what this is just too much. I do. I I will not allow someone to do this thing, uh, and, and I, I think that's I think that's very important. I think, you know, um, in our society, you got check you guys uh, follow me on this idea, right? Something, and this is this is this is one of them things that I've been I've been tinkering on in the back of my mind, right? Um, you know, when when you think about um, masculinity at versus um, being a gentleman, you know, masculinity versus being a gentleman. Um, sometimes we are asked to do things that are 
you know, that are kind of we feel as a as a man we should do, right? Mm-hmm. But they're but they a lot of times they're really just um, it's it's really mostly just a a, a societal pressure to do. Now, it, here's the example I want to give. I, I want to okay. be clear, clear with this. Um, I've gone out with uh, I've gone out to to lunch to a to a business lunch, right? Um, me, me, man, she, female, we go out to do a, a business lunch, right? Mm-hmm. It's almost an expectation <laughs> that I'm going to pay. Now, I, 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 I essentially, I offer to pay, I, you know, cause for one yeah. thing, for one thing, I did the inviting, right? I, I told them to meet me at the, hey, let's meet at the such and such space at two o'clock, right? But um, I, I think if the roles were reversed and she said, meet me at, the, let's meet at the restaurant at two o'clock, I would come prepared to pay for my own meal, <laughs> right? But it, it seems like uh, we are always on on for masculinity so so the so the so i get you whether she she's she's not my lady she's not my wife right but if she's in my company i have the responsibility of i take on the responsibility of of manhood of of masculinity and to take care of her right and i i think sometimes that can be some some sometimes y'all Fellas, y'all tell me what y'all think about this. Sometimes I it could be taken advantage of in some ways. I feel like you know. So, so you know, what, what's what's y'all thoughts? It's just in my imagination. Tell me, tell me y'all thoughts. Oh, wait. Well, wait. like you said, it was business, mm-hmm. and a lot of times as men, we we got to be. If it's business, we're we're doing a business contract. That's what we're doing. We going for business. Something. We finna work together on something that we can make money off of, whatever the case may be. This is business. This is a business meeting. Now, I can, you know, just because I offered the business meeting, I can pay. But the woman should understand this is a business meeting. So you should be prepared. We're talking about business. So if you want a cup of coffee, if you want something, you can get your own cup of coffee because we're talking about business. We ain't talking about a relationship. We, we, we finna do business. We finna try to make money. We finna do contracts. This is not, now I can still be that gentleman and, and offer or whatever, but if we doing business, there shouldn't be any expectation behind that. And I think along with me, and I think men need to have a standard and a boundary. You know, if this is somebody I'm dating, I ask you out on a date. Yeah, of course I'm supposed to pay. That's that's all right. That, you know, That's what I'm supposed to do. But if this is a business meeting, this is business. This is not dating. We we're not doing that. We're doing business. So, you know, don't look for me to pay for your for your coffee. Don't look for me to pay for your meal. We're here to do business. This is not dating. Unless that's unless unless you're talking about a, you know, I'm just going by what you're saying. You said a business meeting. No, I don't have to pay. No, it shouldn't be a requirement. All right. Brother Richie, you, you go. You gonna say something? Let, let me hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, coach. Don't be too hard, bro. Come on, don't be hard on me. <laughs> no, no. This is. I mean, this is a great question. I mean, this is just a great topic in general. And for for me, like I believe the the femininity and the masculinity are like really the, is not understood correctly. But the masculinity is more of a structure, more of a firm deal. And the femininity is more of a nurturing, caring, and loving. And the femininity is always going to come out in the man because that's nurturing. And we're automatically going to nurture and do that, no matter if it's a business meeting, no matter if we're trying to we're dating or relationship status or whatever the case might be, because it's nurturing. And that's who we are is we have femininity and we have masculinity energies. And once those energy intertwine, now we can go to the masculine with some structure. The structure is that it's a business meeting. Since the business meeting, we have this structure here. And now the feminine is going to kick in and say, look, OK, this is what it is. But like you're saying, coach, you explained it. Sometimes it can be taken advantage of. 
Just like if you were in a bar, you, know, you go to the bar, go to the club or whatever, the girl is always wanting to the guy to buy the drinks. Now, why is that? Why is that so stereotypical for that to happen? Why can a girl not do that? Because her friends will look at her some type of way. Now, she will look at me some type of way if, I don't know, but I'm just saying, if I don't pay for the meal because it was a business meeting and I invited her. Just like you said, Coach. Mm -hmm. Now, she invited me. Now, I would be automatically come and say, look, I know I'm paying for my meal. And she's going to offer. Maybe she's offering. If she doesn't, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take care of it. But if she does, then I'll, I'll just allow it to be because that's a, obviously a blessing. I don't want to stop her blessings. And whatever the case may be, however I look at it. But we can look at it from all kind of different angles. But to present it at, like that and understand the, the masculinity and the femininity, I, it doesn't matter if it's a business meeting or not. I'm always going to pay for it because it's just what it is, especially – because the nurturing and the femininity is me. I want I'm in more into my femininity than I am masculine because I, I don't have the structure. I'm just I'm in a moment. I'm in a now. And that's how I do things. But it's always going to be different for most men, just like Robin was talking about as well. This is going to be different. Like he's he already knows he's not going to do this. It's a business meeting. But when you know who you are and you, you already set the standard, it's a business meeting. This is where I'm at. Period. Point blank. That's it. That's how you have to be you and you have to put that out there right away. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think I think uh, I think that what we this is a conversation. This is about boundaries, and this is kind of like what we're talking about with deal breakers and and as you just as you're dealing with people uh, in in general, and and for us dealing with females, you know, um, that that's you know, there's just these little things in our in our society that kind of you know have you question. You know, one time y'all y'all check this one out. One time. Uh, I was I was walking towards the door. You're walking towards the door, fellas. Um, now you can you can look inside the restaurant and see the. Let's say you go into Dunkin' Donuts, right? Mm. You can walk in, and I have to be going in one one of those kind of stores. I look in and I can see the line is mad long, right? The line is long. I'm walking up. She's walking up. Naturally. I'm going to open the door and let her go first as mm -hmm. a gentleman would. Right. Mm -hmm. When I get inside, it'd be nice if she had to say, you know what? You open the door for me. You go first. <laughs> you go ahead and go get your coffee. Cause I'm sure you, you in a hurry. And I, and I was in a hurry. Right. You, you, you think she did that? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you. And I'll be in line. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> And we as men, we got to expect that. You know what I'm saying? We just be a gentleman. Like Coach was saying, we just, we just going to be a gentleman regardless. You know what I'm saying? Don't have any expectation. Like I said, if you open the door and you don't get the response back saying thank you, don't get in your feelings, bro. I know a lot of brothers say, man, I, I just pulled the door up on them. And no, don't do that. Stay, <laughs> stay in. Look, open the door. Let you, If she don't say nothing, she don't say thank you. Okay, I'm still a gentleman. Yeah. This is what I was raised to be. So I'm going to do that. If I don't get it now, I don't have a problem with it. I'm going to keep doing it because I know I'm going to get it back. I don't have any expectation. I, I'm just going to do what a gentleman does. If you acknowledge it, you acknowledge it. If you don't, you don't. That's yeah. how I look at it. But yeah, yeah like I said, no, nah, bro, you you wouldn't finish. <laughs> she wouldn't finish let you skip. No, nah, she wouldn't finish let you get the latte before her. No, no that ain't going to happen. No, sir. Uh <laughs> I got my, my friend, uh, Dr. Carla, is on. I, I love this. I get to uh, connect with my friend. She said, thank you so much for the, for hosting this, Kelvin. She said, exactly, regardless. She agreed with you, brother. Uh, she said, regardless. So she, she's checking it out on the Facebook page. And uh, my, my friend, uh, Dr. Parks, Dr. Parks, she said, business is business. <laughs> okay. All right. Now I, I heard everything y'all said, and guess what? If I go to the if I invite somebody to the restaurant or to to Starbucks uh, again, I'm still yeah. going to offer the pay because it's just it's what? just it's just it's just in me to it's do. You. And um, mm -hmm. you know, it's just a cup of coffee, uh, and and I, I think of it on the on the widest scale that um, um, I'm I'm creating an atmosphere of giving, of connection. You know, and I'm, I'm it's not about the coffee. Mm -hmm. It's about what it represents. Uh, and and uh, us, if, we, if we're going to work together, if we're connecting, boom, I'll be the, I'll, I'll start the giving process. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe that the, the giving will come back and uh, 
so so it's all like like I tell guys there's to me there's no such thing as the friend zone. A lot of guys you put yourself in the friend zone. Um, you know, hoping and praying that your actions and what you do and your masculinity and the gentleman that's in you will be seen and a possibility she will see you negative. If we have to learn that, look, not every woman is going to be appealing or going to like you as an individual. You you might be an associate, but just because you stay close, you 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 put the boxes in the truck, you help her move whenever she calls, you on the phone, you trying to show her something. If it's not reciprocated, that is something that's not your place. Sometimes as men, we go a little bit overboard. Your gentlemanly actions are your morals. Yeah, you always open the door. But there are certain things, just like with Coach and his wife, it, there are certain things before she he saw his wife in 55 days, but she didn't get certain treatment until that's my wife right there. You know what I'm saying? He was still the gentleman, probably, but I, I don't want to speak for him, but he was still the gentleman. But when he re that's my wife, certain things went to the next level. And that's one of the problems I think with guys a lot of times. Uh, there is no such thing as the friend zone. You just hoping and praying. And that's not going to get you anywhere. Sometimes, me and we have to accept the fact that this woman over here is not for me or this woman is not attracted to me. Let me leave that as an associate, somebody I can do business with, somebody I can get information from, something like that. Other than that, let me go on down the road. You sitting there trying to do brownie points and putting boxes in the closet ain't going to help you get that woman. <laughs> Good stuff. Freddie, what you think? I was going to say the same thing Robert, Robert said, but... <laughs> I, I think a lot of times, uh, and, and a couple points too, I think a lot of times women put unrealistic expectations on unrealistic situations, um, number one. Uh, number two, in, in conjunction with what Robert said, a lot of times we stay in stuff too long. You know, if you realize somebody does not like you, does not is not feeling you that way, uh, it's best just to, to leave or either just accept it for what it is. Um, men and women, um, we just stay in stuff too long. And I think we stay in stuff too long because we try to either prove a point or either that we can try to win him or her over. And But once a person's mind is made up that they don't like you in that way, then it's just best to get what you can out of the relationship. If it's about business, make it about business. If it's going to be a friendship, a friendship. And if it's going to be neither one, then just keep it moving. <laughs> and that's my thoughts, man. <laughs> keep it in the real. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good stuff. All right, uh, fellas, let, I, I just want to go around and, and get uh, we, 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 we wrapping up right now. So I want to I want to go ahead and get uh, you guys uh, your your final thoughts on this idea. Like there, there's something that I, I didn't as we talk about, like, you know, what men find beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. you know, what can what can a woman do to increase her beauty? beyond hair, getting her hair done and makeup and all those superficial things. Like, like what can a woman do to increase her beauty and her attractiveness to, to men in her space? There's a woman that's sitting here listening to this and she waiting for the, she waiting for the nuggets. So give it to her. Coach Richie, you up. Yeah, when you when you when you talk about it like that, it's it's. I mean, this like your beauty is like I would, like we've been talking about all day. It's just your. I mean, stepping. I mean, being in your power and being who you are. And I would always say because if you're if you're not healing, that's what's beautiful. If you're not healing from that past relationship, if you're carrying that past relationship into the next or to this situation, it's not going to work. If you're healing and you're on that verge, that's what's beautiful. That's what's amazing. That's what will charm a dude. And you can bring that that healing in there and you can talk about your power, how much you're in love with yourself and what you're doing for yourself. Because if you give it to yourself, it's going to be a bonus when you receive it from that guy. That's completely what's going to happen. And when you're in, when you're in that mood, I mean, that mode and you're operating from that state. Uh, it's magical, and that's when you start to play with magic, and life is starting to happen for you, not yeah. to you. Good stuff. Good stuff. Brother Lee. Um, I'm just like with Coach. Uh, 
first thing I would tell the ladies, you know, how can you get to that place? When you wake up in the morning, you look at that mirror, do you like you? No makeup, hair all over your head, this, that, another. Do you like you? Are you sexy in that mirror right now? Without makeup, without without eyelashes, all that physical. Do you love you? See, a lot of times that's what we gotta get up. We gotta get on saying, yeah, we like to. Do you like you at the raw you? Do you know who you are as an individual? And if you don't know who you are and you don't like yourself, if you if you can't if you can't be seen without, if I can't see the raw of you, that's how if if that's what a man really falls in love with. Yes, he sees you, but that when that man sees that raw in you, no makeup, I mean just the raw you. That that vulnerable you, that's what makes a man love you. And a lot of times, ladies, you got to wake up in the morning and look at that mirror without makeup. And you got to say to yourself, I love me some me. You know, don't don't look in the mirror after you put your eyelashes on, your eyelashes, your base and all this. Now nah, I love me some me. No, when you wake up in the morning and your hair over your head, you got a bonnet on. Can you look in that mirror and say, I love me some me? That's your first start. Nice stuff. Good stuff, brother. Good stuff, brother Freddie. Give, give, give it to her. Give, give the ladies uh, your your thoughts on how they can increase their beauty beyond just getting their hair done and getting mm -hmm. a, uh, a Brazilian. You know, tell them, tell them what they can, what they can do to increase their beauty. Oh man, you, you know, Kelvin. The, the one thing I think the women can do to increase their beauty is realizing that they're they are they are boss chicks. You know what I mean? They, they don't need a a, a a a man to validate them uh, for self love or self confidence. Uh, most of the times, we already know the answer to what we're looking for anyway. Um, you know, mm -hmm. like you know, we go to therapy to to seek validation or to seek guidance, but. Most of the time, the therapist's job is just to guide you to the question that you already are seeking out anyway. Mm -hmm. And so, a lot of times that you know, you know, God has made us, or you know, what we believe in the divine purpose has made us to already, you know, uh, seeking you shall find, and not the door shall open. <laughs> and so, mm -hmm. you know, you know, once you have yourself aligned with all of those wonderful things, then you know, you are that boss chick, you are that that go getter that can make stuff happen. And then once you are making stuff happen, then you know the universe or God, you know, will bring those things to you. Um, and so, you know, a lot of times we look for validation, but a lot of times it's already there for us. The answers are there. We just gotta look and find it. And you know, once we find it, that's when miracles and stuff start to flow and this stuff stuff start to happen for us in our lifetime. So, ladies, I would encourage you just to keep. Uh, doing what you're doing, uh, like like uh, Robert Lee said, you know, find you know your self love, your self worth. It's there, it's there for you for the giving, uh, and it's up to you to grab and take hold of it. Nice, nice, <clears throat> and you know, uh, I was on a I was on a clubhouse room um, a few days ago, and I saw a lady. She came on and she said, um, "Excuse me, one sec." She came on and she said um, she was just getting divorced from a, a 27 year marriage, 25, 27 year marriage. She was just getting divorced. And she said, she, she said, you know, I want to just get my life back. I want to get my excitement back. I want to just live. She said, but I just feel stuck. She said, I just feel stuck. And so while she was talking, I, I, I went to her, her bio and just looked through it. And I went to her Instagram page and I noticed that she was into Zumba. You guys might have heard me tell this story. I noticed she was into Zumba. So when it came time, I got a, I, it came time for me to talk to her. I said, I said, you know what? If you're into Zumba, and I, I, I told her, I said, I, I've already checked you out. I know what Zumba is. I, I I wandered in. I was in the gym one time and heard all them drums going, them beats going, and women running in the room. So I ran in there too, see what they was doing, and they were doing Zumba. And I told her, I said, "Listen, if you do Zumba, when that music come on, you dance for your whole life. You just get your whole life, 
and you dance away the pain, the suffering, the frustration, the anger, the sadness. You just dance off all of that, right? Your light will shine. People look, look, there's something you can tell when somebody's just when you, you can tell when somebody's just kind of doing a little something, and then you see somebody who's really doing it and, and they getting free, right? Mm-hmm. So I said, you know what? And, and and since you're having a hard time connecting and finding somebody in your in your world, right? Get, uh, get on a plane and fly out to the big Zumba conference. Go out there. And and do the same exact thing, right? When that music come on, it be it might probably be like five hundred people in the room, but people gonna see your light. And I'm telling you, maybe in that room, maybe in that room, there's a man who's watching you, who's listening to you, who's observing you, and he is connecting to your light. He's connecting to your excitement, your energy. And he wants you in his life. That man, that's that man. I'm telling you, that man. So, so get into the thing you're into. I got, I got one of my friends uh, in, in at the church from back home. She said she stood up in Bible study, and she she was always at Bible study. She was really into Bible study, right? She wanted she wanted them people to sit on the front the first two rows in Bible study in a big old church. And the, 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 the teacher told her to stand up and read the scripture. And she stood up and read the scripture, right? And he, she, she read it and, she, and you could tell she enjoyed it. And over there in the corner was a guy who, who's been divorced for a few years. And he was checking her out while she's reading the scripture. <laughs> he, he, look, he's checking her out while she's reading the scripture, y'all. <laughs> and and he, he, he said... You know what? He said, you know, I, I I feel God pressing on my heart that that might be, that's my wife. And he was like, no. He's like, no, I ain't, I don't want no parts of no wife. He, he, he's ha- he, said, he said he was having an old conversation, an argument with God. Because he's like, yo, do you know what I just came out of? <laughs> I don't need no wife. I need peace and quiet, <laughs> you know. But he said he came back the next week. He didn't. He didn't even talk to her that week. Came back to the next week, and she was in the front row again with her <laughs> reading and and, and reading mm-hmm. the scripture and 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 really getting into the thing that she's into. And so he was like, "Yo, I gotta go. I gotta go say holla at her. I gotta go say something to her now." Went over there and talked to her, and I think now they they've been married like twenty five years or something like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so. It does happen. Now, somebody going to say to me, well, Kelvin, that may, so what, so what you saying? You all, we all need to just run into church and just stand up and read our scripture and maybe we might get a husband? No. <laughs> no. That, that's not what I'm saying. Because all y'all ain't going to get no husband in church. Let me just, let me just break it to you. Okay? There, there used to be the spot where, where people got husbands, but that, that's, not, that's not so much the case no more. <laughs> right? It's about you getting social and you loving your life, your whole life, whatever the thing is that you're passionate about. Get into mm-hmm. that. Thing. Whatever you, whatever excites you, get into that thing. That thing that turns you on, that 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 lights you up. And I don't care what I don't care if it's roller skating. <laughs> right, go find the go hop on the, uh, to the to the site where they doing all the roller skating roller skating conferences, and go roller skate with them. Mm-hmm. Right, because there's nothing more attractive than a person who absolutely loves their life. Person, I, I don't care if she got long hair, short hair, tall, short, skinny, fat, light, dark. None of that even matters, but a person who is passionate about their life, passionate about the thing that they're into, and they absolutely love their life, there's nothing more attractive than that. So get into your life. Get get into your life. And I agree. Be amazed as to what happens. You I can say you got, to, 
Yeah, what I'm saying, you you got to divorce the divorce. A lot of times when you find divorcees that are stuck, they still going through the divorce. And the way to get unstuck is just like what you said, start living your life. You, 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 you have to, it's going to be a process you got to go through, but you went through a divorce and that is not your life. That's not the end of your life. You know what I'm saying? So like he was saying, a lot of times what you have to do, get out here and do you enjoy life. Go do things that you like to do. Because one of the things I tell people a lot of time, sometimes you are found in your mess. You ain't all always going, once you heal, you're going through a healing process. You will meet people along the way in your journey through the healing process. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But that does not mean you're supposed to be with that person. But again, as long as you are trying to do, like you said, mm -hmm. go do Zumba. Baby, go to the next, like you said, go to the next time, be doing Zumba. You ain't thinking about it, man. I'm doing Zumba. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing me. I'm not thinking about a relationship right now because I may not be I may not be able to handle somebody's heart right now. Because see, what happens a lot of times with people, you go from relationship, you get out, you get divorced. A year later, you in a relationship and you wonder why that relationship, because you haven't divorced the divorce. There's a process you have to go through in there. Even like I said, we talk about breaking up regular a uh, man and woman type of relationships. When a marriage ends, that's a process to go through, but especially if it's been a number of years, because sometimes all you know is the process, the perspective, the the ideas, the values, the boundaries, the standard of that man you was together with for 20 some years, 10 years, 15 years. So you got to get yourself to 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 divorce that, to do an autopsy on that. And like I said, a lot of times people, we don't do autopsies on our relationship. We we got to learn what caused this. Did I have a cause in it? These are the things that you go through. But you told her exactly right. Baby, go do Zumba. Don't worry about no man. I'm stuck. No, you ain't stuck. Get out the house. Go go do Zumba. Go, go do your thing. And like you said, you doing Zumba, the next thing you know, they're a guy that's into Zumba. And y'all having a conversation. Well, we know we got Zuma in common, but what else do we have in common? Mm -hmm. But a lot of times why you get stuck is because you don't want to move. You haven't let that relationship go. You haven't let that marriage go. At some point in time, you're going to have to divorce the divorce. Absolutely. Absolutely. Gentlemen, uh, Coach Richie, go ahead and tell them, tell them how they how, give us your last final words and then tell us how, how they can follow you, how they can find you. Let them know what, if you got something coming up, and um, then we're going to let you go for tonight. Yeah, yeah, I, absolutely. I mean, the last final thing is really I love you, like you, heal, and forgive yourself. And that, that's it. That's my that's my motto. That's what I use for everything and everybody. I still use it for myself. And I'm Joshua Richie 429 everywhere, all over Instagram, all over, I mean, on Facebook, Joshua Richie, R I C H E Y 429. That's where I'm at. It's where you can find me and you can see everything that's about to come out. Everything is going on. All the programs, all the courses, everything. So this was lovely. This was amazing. I'm, I'm really excited about it, especially for you ladies. I hope you got some great information, great content, because we were definitely dropping them for you. <laughs> all right. Very nice. Very nice. Brother Lee. Uh, like I said, I, my last thing I would say, about, like I said, just love yourself. Get, th get through that. But if you want to find me, uh, Robert Lee on Facebook, IG, same thing, Robert Lee, find me on that. Uh, but like I said, that's the number one thing. You got to love you some you. And until you start loving you, nothing's going to change. Appreciate this uh, opportunity. Hope we can do it again. Absolutely. Absolutely. Brother Freddie. Hey, Brother Kelvin. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> give us your give us your final words and um and how people can follow you if you got something going on let us know oh, sweet uh you you can follow me on instagram at dj love um atl uh, and that's my uh instagram my ig page um i'm also on clubhouse i do uh love house conversations uh every thursday night is ladies night and Sunday is uh, Ask a Single Slash Married Man Anything. Um, so you don't want to miss those particular events that go on each and every week. 
Um, my thoughts for the night, well, it was great. Um, Kelvin, I appreciate you having this platform and this 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 cast for the night, man. Getting a uh, wonderful group of black men together, man, to talk about these wonderful topics that a lot of times we don't get a chance to discuss, man, and, and, and the women can actually hear it and process it and, and, and implement it, man, for their lives as well. And uh, take some positive away from it, you know, from each and every um, guy that was on stage tonight. Um, you know, you know, I, I would take say, ladies, just continue to do um, some of these wonderful things that you, you know, that if you're not doing, I'm, so, I'm sure a lot of you are already doing. Just love yourself, be there for yourself. And, you know, if you're in a relationship, um, put the best you can into it. Um, if you're not in one, just be patient. Um, you know, um, God, you know, will bring that person to you, reveal it to you. Um, let's continue this to, uh, uh, as I always say, be that boss, uh, lady for your life. Um, continue this to love on yourself, your family, your friends, and you know, and we will, um, I know Kevin will continue to have these wonderful, uh, cast and live streaming, uh, pretty soon. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm happy that I'm on stage with everybody. And uh, I hope you all have a safe and blessed week. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, so I'm glad you guys came. I appreciate you coming through. And you guys, uh, y'all in the audience, please hit that hit that like button. I need everybody to hit the like button on these um, on these talk talks and these topics as we do these. <clears throat> you know, uh, I'm I'm just blessed to have these great connections with these amazing men. And, um, you know, I want to bring all the all my resources to my friends and to to the community. You know, uh, we need more of these conversations. Some of these conversations we have, some of this stuff people just didn't tell us growing up. You know, as as men, we didn't nobody. Nobody. We, we really didn't have. I mean, we had the barbershop. You know, we had a few other things, but there was very few p places where men of intelligence got the, got a chance to just speak and we got a chance to connect and learn and grow and, and all of that. And, uh, and so we have that here, we have these communities. So I'm glad you guys are here. And um, I, I, I do for you guys staying around, I do have a, uh, a gift for you. It, uh, check out the free, I have a free mini course called finding the one. If you ha are having a difficult time finding love, finding the one who's right for you, uh, jump in there, send me, you know, jump in there. Finding the one dot club is the site. I got a mini course. It got videos, got all that good stuff. And um, it's just there for you. So jump in on that as well. Look, if, if y'all got a, a, a topic that you think we need to cover, uh, let me know. You could just send it to me at uh, lovecoachatlanta at gmail.com. That is the email that we use to connect with everybody. And also, I don't know who did it, but I hope y'all donated. I hope you donated. We just, all this technology costs, <laughs> you guys, all this technology costs. And uh, we just trying to, uh, every service costs, right? So we want to, um, we you just want to support the things that you are blessed with, you guys. Uh, this stuff is not, not, not easy. Microphones cost, lights cost. Computer costs, programs cost, everything costs, and so if you got anything from the, the from the experience, you ought to share and um, give love. So, thank you guys so much. I appreciate all of you being here tonight, um, and we'll tune in next week. We're gonna do the same thing, and, and we're gonna have a new cast of men or women. We'll see how it goes. I'm talking to the ladies. Um, they, look, they putting the I'm thinking about putting together a, a, a package, a group of women, some boss women, and, and let them come on and kind of talk about what they desire in 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 a man, in a high value man. So um, we're gonna keep this thing going and uh, and mix it up and have a great time doing it. So you guys, thank you so much. Till next time, peace and love. See you next time, y'all. Bye bye.